Well, the lineup as we see it right now, we have Jack Brabham, who in fact is in pole position. Then we have Colin Bond side, alongside him there in the front row of the grid. And you can see Colin Bond again with the pretty lady paying attention for him. And there you see the lineup there uh, with the, uh, the starting numbers, the starting positions and the car numbers, etc. Jack Brabham, Colin Bond, then Didi Pironi in the next row with Jim Richards. Then on the third row, Peter Brock and John Bow and the fourth row you've got Kevin Bartlett and Bob Jane that's a little tidy number for you then you've got Dick Johnson Tony Edmondson and bringing up the rear Charlie O'Brien the grid is being cleared from pretty ladies with long legs and tight t-shirts 10 seconds to go they're in the hands of the starter now A little creeping, and oh, Charlie O'Brien started off at at least 30 miles an hour. Charlie O'Brien's gone through and taken the lead. I'm sure he's going to be penalised because the starter pointed a finger right down at him. Look at the weaving and ducking as they go in there. Jack Brown is in the red car on the inside. He comes out of that in third or fourth position. O'Brien's already very wide coming out of Repco. They're side by side already. A little bit of dust and gravel being put up there. There are three abreast coming down from Repco. And there's certainly much even in this first, much more even than yesterday in this first lap. I think there's much more determination here, Jackie, with these drivers today to uh, make up for some of those bad lines of yesterday. Listen, don't think about it. Look, what do you call that for a line? They haven't even got on the racetrack yet. There's more on the grass than anything else. Really side by side, pushing it as hard as they were yesterday. Let's see who's coming through there. Can we read the numbers? It's almost impossible. Brabham certainly dropped back quite a lot. Coming onto the front straight and there's cars all over the road. And Peter Brock was saying that the first lap yesterday was horrendous and naturally the first lap today has been that way for them. Car number one, Charlie O'Brien is leading, but as you said, he could have been and may have been penalised by the clerk of the course. Well, I certainly, he did jump the start. There's no question about that. From our commentary position here, we can see it. And there you see again, slow motion, the replay coming out of there. They're all over the place. That's Retco that they're coming out of. The car on the right-hand side, I can't even see his number right now for the dust, but he's back on. Charlie O'Brien is reading at this time. Jack Brabham is there. Car number seven, that is Peter Brock. Then car number six is John Bow. John Bow's well up, remember. They've got to consider the points of the future. Car John came three, second that, yesterday. That's Dick Johnson, car number three there. But still in the read on the road at least is car number one, Charlie O'Brien. Car number two, Tony Edmondson's right at the back of the field. He's had a moment. He's been in trouble, so therefore he's right at the back of the field. And the positions after two laps, it's been uh, changed. Uh, Charlie O'Brien is in the lead on our screen, followed very closely by Brock. Uh, we would have to, and John Bowe in third position, we would have to wait for uh, the officials to give us the official uh, uh, placings at the end of this, but that's the way the race is running at this moment. Uh, and look at this, car number 11, gentleman Jack Brabham, totally in the wrong lane, obviously thinking of something else. There we have the placings, the official placings at the moment after three laps, Peter Brock, one, John Bowe, two, Didier Peroni, three, he's uh, certainly made up some time, that's Tony Edmondson now bringing up the rear and the tyres screaming as they come through for a weave again and enter the straight a little bit tidier, Jeff. Well, Jim Richards right now is in fourth position. He's up in fourth position. Kevin Bartlett's in fifth position. Remember the man who won yesterday? He's in fifth position. As they come past here, they start finishing line again. Bob Kevin. Jane's in fifth position. And Jack seems to have dropped right back, uh, running into uh, second last position. Tony Edmondson just crawling down the straight as the rest of the cars fall through on Repco. And here we are again, right off the road. Car number 10 is Colin Bob Jack Brabham. There he is in the red car, <laughs> using a little bit of the green and brown stuff. I think you may have decided that discretion uh, is certainly the best point of Alan. He's decided to pull out of the fray at this moment after being involved with at least three shunts yesterday. Well, that's Dick Johnson. He's got in his sights right now. Poor Dick Johnson. If you've seen what happened to everybody yesterday that was close to poor old Jack, he must be trembling in his, in his driving seat right now. Peter Brock out there officially. John Bauer, Didier Peroni, one, two, and three, and the rest are trying to turn it on down general credits back straight as they head towards the S's. Number seven, he's got alongside Peter Brock's alongside. Can he do it? This is a real tight number in there. You see Didi Pironi in car number nine there. He seemed to be in problems too. They've got close right up together. Peter Brock, in fact, has now taken the lead, going neck and neck down the back stretch. Peter Brock's done it. 
Can he hold it in there? Charlie O'Brien has spun right off into the inside. The crowd love it. Everybody's up in their feet. Poor Charlie can't see a thing. He's got the London fog in there. Look at him. There's there. He doesn't know where he is. Peter Brock, one of the real talents of motor racing. I prophesied if Peter Brock were to go over to Europe, he could stand on his own two feet against any of the drivers in the world in this formula of racing without any threat at all. He could be a very talented man indeed. With only two laps to go, he's got a very narrow lead over John Bowe, remember? John Bowe finished second yesterday, and in the point standings, this could be impressed. He could win this championship event if he stayed where he was, and I think he's got his eyes set in trying to win this. If this were one Jay Stewart and he wasn't being very gentlemanly, I'd give that black car a little tap in the rear end about now. Seems as though John Bow is just a little bit more of a gentleman than you, Jackie. <laughs> well, they sweep in towards the checkered flag now. Well, I don't know if I would have done that, really, but that's the way to do it if you really want to do it and become no friends to anyone. Look at that. Peter Brock, justifiably the winner. John Bow, therefore, should come forward and win this Commodore event, and Kevin Bartlett, I think, will finish second in that. And then followed up by bon Jer Bob Jane as they went across the line in the first four positions. And they have certainly settled down. They've, they've decided not even to, uh, to go through a quick uh, lap following this event. But as far as it went in heat two of the Holden Dealer Team Commodore Race of Champions, Peter Brock in place, in uh, place number one, car number seven, John Bowe in car number six came in second, Kevin Bartlett, car number five, came in third. And what a great event. There is more action, so much more. You're going to get it this afternoon on the National Nine Network, here live from Calder in Melbourne.